Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Where is the place to be? I believe it's the place to be right here. It's good to see you all tonight. We're glad you came out. We've got, uh, got some music playing. We kind of feel like this is your first time here. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. We kind of feel like uh, worshiping Jesus is uh, something fun to do, and we enjoy doing it, singing songs about him and to him and for him. So we hope that uh, you all will stand, and uh, we'll uh, sing together some songs that uh, talk about the, the great thing that, uh, that Jesus is and serving God can be. And one of the things that uh, Brother Matt kicked off, was it good to have Brother Matt back? I don't know if we ever gave him a real round of applause but but we need an even larger round of applause for sister tiffany amen. is it great to have sister tiff back amen so good to have you all back we miss you we miss you when you're not here we understand you've got a great work to do there but praise god for uh, for the things that you do and also for uh, how you serve us so so good to have you back good to have you with us and be able to worship um, together with us but um, we kicked off the fact that this was going to be missions in May, missions month. And uh, this song, Rooftops, we sang it last week, and even Miss Tammy said, are we singing Rooftops again? But one of the things that kind of hit me was, you know, to get up on the rooftop and to yell to your neighbor on something that you're really loud about, you'd have to really be excited about it. Church, we can't be excited about missions. We can't be excited about our Jesus. And then we won't tell anybody about it. So, so it's so important tonight that we get that excitement, that love, that why I want to tell you how good it is so we can share this with our neighbors. So missions month to me kind of means that we've got to be excited about what Jesus has done for us, the difference he can make in our life. And, and really want that for our neighbors and for people in our, in our family circle and then also people, you know, half a world away. So let's make this our, uh, our mission song for the, this, uh, this month. Let's all sing together.
Praise the Lord. Are you thankful your sins have been washed by the blood? That was weak. <laughs> Anybody else thankful? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what worship would actually look like if we really had all of our hope in Jesus. The bridge of the song has really been stirring in me this week. There's no shadow that he won't light up. There's no mountain he won't climb up. He's coming after us. It doesn't matter where we want to hide. It doesn't, he knows. He knows where we are. He knows right where we are. That's how much he loves us. Let's really worship through this next song. Sing that verse again. But 
I feel like someone needs to know that you are loved. It's not because of anything that you've done or could ever do, but He loves you. Sometimes we feel unlovable. Sometimes we feel worthless. Maybe we've made bad decisions or maybe it's what we've been told our whole life. But He loves us. And it's unlike anything that anyone could ever do. It's like unlike anything that anyone could ever say. Let's sing that verse again. your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so praise you, Father, for loving us in a way that we've, as Nicole said, never experienced before. And God, no other love is greater than yours, God. As we think about the love of a mother or father, even your love eclipses that, Father. So I pray that everybody in this room not only knows their love, but they feel that love, God. They feel that warmth. They feel that embrace of a heavenly Father who gave his son's life that we might have that life, God. Today, Press that into us and press that upon us that we might fully 
know you, God, and understand your love for us. And may that love, as your scripture says, motivate us to do the things that you've called us to do. Not shame, uh, not regret, Father, not fear of punishment, not any of those other things. But may how much you love us motivate us to love you and serve you in return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Aren't you thankful he loves you tonight, church? Amen. You can all be seated and we'll get to dismissing people here in just a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, okay. So we're going to dismiss junior high boys and girls and high school boys and girls out the back on this side. Junior high and high school. Junior high and high school. nursery is Miss Jordan Brown, so if you've been there or need to go there. All right, pre-K through first grade on this side, Miss Stephanie Moore, if you'll go to the back door, pre-K through first grade. Pre-K through first grade. Toddlers, Miss Cindy. Here's Miss Cindy Toddlers. Second through fifth grade girls. Miss Mandy Johnson is next. Y'all wait at the back door for Miss Mandy. Second through fifth grade boys. Second through fifth grade boys. Miss Alex. You want to go ahead and get in line, boys? All right. Let me get that Bible there, Miss Angie. Matthew chapter 6, Luke chapter number 11. Jesus speaks of light in two different places here, and I want to talk to you about, uh, about that light for a little while, and then we're going to pray, because it's going to be some encouragement, but it's also going to be some conviction in this, and so uh, we'll need to pray at the end to make sure that the light is correct. Um, anytime I go to a third world country... Um, I want to say this, we don't know how bad it is until we've been around bad, uh, and we don't know how good it is until we've been around bad, and, and so I have a hard time coming home, and this is something that I have to deal with in, in, internally. Um, I told my wife last night that I'd really struggled coming home uh, because the things that matter there when I'm there working, when I get home, it's like, well... I know everybody's starving around the world. I know this is going on. I know this is going on. But we got to get back to our American way of life. So I really struggle. And, and, I, and I struggle to the point of almost wanting to be mad. And unlike Jesus, I can't get mad and not sin. <laughs> you know, everybody's always like, well, Jesus flipped tables and got mad. Most people's righteous indignation is unrighteous. And so I have to be really careful in my spirit not to get really upset about uh, what I am thrust back into, because we go from all this stuff that we're doing into a culture that that doesn't have anything that we're doing back into the culture. It, it, it's a big uh, roller coaster ride for me. So, uh, y'all, so a lot of you don't know this. The first few days we were teaching a marriage conference, doing staff training for a missionary organization. Then the day that we were leaving for me and Tiffany to go on our 10-year wedding anniversary trip, I caught a stomach virus, 
and lost 10 pounds over the next few days. So not only did I not get to uh, enjoy the, the last part of it, but I had a lot of time for self-reflection, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, and so then I came home. I was sick, very sick. I, I'm doing better, but then I've been very weak all week and, and having to sleep long hours and trying to get over the hump, trying to get back to where I'm supposed to be. Sunday, by third service, I was praying during the video, God just helped me stand up for one more sermon. I was seeing spots. I was so weak uh, at that point. And so all of this just hits me like a train. And so it's a mixture of all these things. When I, read, when I go to this place, I always come back and read Matthew 6. Anytime I go out of the country, I come back, I read Matthew 6. Uh, because it reminds me why I'm doing what I do. Don't store up your treasures here on earth. Where moth eats it and rust destroys it. Where thieves break in and steal. Uh, this is the passage I read every time I come back. Store up your treasures in heaven. Where moths cannot destroy. Where rust cannot destroy. Thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the, heart, the desire of your heart will be also. But that's not what caught my eye this year when I came back. Um, what caught my eye was verses, verse 22 and 23. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you actually, uh, and, and if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness really is? Because no man can serve two masters. You'll hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You know the Bible teaches us that our eyes and our ears and our mouth are gates. All throughout the Scripture. What goes in your body and what comes out of your body is very important. And so that's what really struck me. Uh, and what God was trying to show me uh, when I was kind of maybe like decompressing from, from my trip was. It wasn't that the cultures were that vastly different. People enjoy themselves there. They, <laughs> the poorest people you've ever seen having the most fun you've ever seen. They're... They're kicking their ragged soccer balls around the ragged soccer field that has a donkey two hours prior eating and messing on the soccer field. So watch the landmine if you know what I'm talking about. You know, no nets on the soccer field. They're, they're, they're all working on their uh, 100cc motorcycles. And there's no Harleys over there. It's all enduro bikes, junk bikes. But they're all just hanging out and working on it. And just, it's not like, and, and here's what I want you to understand. Poor people can go to hell. Rich people can go to hell. Poor people can go to heaven. Rich people can go to heaven. Poor people can have just as good of a time as rich people can have. It ain't got nothing to do with money. It's got to do with your heart. It's got to do with your mindset. And so what God was showing me through all of this was it's, it's about your eye, what you see. So when I come back here, what was going to be important was what I kept my eyes on. So what we have a tendency to do in Christianity is to take our eyes off Christ and put it on ourselves. Amen? What we want, what we need, what we think is important, what our priorities are. What our, let me make sure I say that, our priorities are. But when I went to Honduras, it was like a reset for me. And for seven days, the first five and then a few days after that, I had my eyes on the prize. But there's no difference than that third world piece of country land and this first world land. Our biggest issue is I can't believe this $900 cell phone I can't get service with. I can't believe it. Of every place in the world I've ever been and all the things that's going on, I can't get so I can't even look at Facebook right now. That's one of the biggest issues we have day in and day out. That's a first world issue. It really is. But it's about your eyes. Why are you so worried about looking at Facebook? Think about this. If your eyes are gate and whatever you put in your eyes goes in your soul, whatever you put in your eyes fills your body, you fill it with light or you fill it with darkness, your flesh 
has an innate desire to do exactly what it wants to do and feed itself. So the reason you look at Facebook nine hours a day is because your flesh, the part of you that's rotting away, that is decaying by the moment, knows that if it can keep your eyes on the wrong thing, your eyes won't be on the prize. Think about it. Focus. Did you watch my video today? Focus. First place, preeminence. Somebody asked me this week, why do you do what you do? It's, it's, it's not accolades. It's not to move up a ladder. It's not to go here and do this. It's not even to be the best at what I'm doing. It's because 10 years ago, I met Jesus in such a profound way that I live every day of my life to meet him again that way. Focus. Him. Eyes on the prize. Not eyes on the possessions. That's what he's saying here. Whatever you keep your eyes on is where your heart is. Whatever you put your eyes on is where your body is. Why do you think when we get so obsessed with something that's outside of the realm of kingdom things, we'll buy the, boot, we'll buy the videos, we'll buy the DVD, whatever you do. We get the magazines, we look up the articles on the computer, we know all the things about everything that's going to, is because the flesh that you have is going towards, and hear me, your flesh, and you say, I'm saying put parameters from what your eyes see. Whatever your flesh understands is going, it's going to be overrun. It's going to be more than it's supposed to be. You're never going to be able to do it this much and not do it more than you're supposed to. So you got to put parameters. Think about that in your own life. What is that thing right now you're crazy about? You have looked at it over and over. You've watched that video. You've watched that YouTube video. You've, you've looked up that magazine. You, you, you've looked up that writer. You've done, you've done all of that. So why? Because your eyes and your ears are filling yourself full of something that's not light. That's what your flesh wants. But God wants the different thing. What is it? First on Him. How much have you looked at Jesus today? I mean, this is convicting for me. Why does it take me going to a third world country to get back to the place where I go, how much have I looked at Jesus today? How much, have I, how much today have I sat and stared at the glory of God? Whatever that looks like in your life. What did you look at today? What have you looked at today? We've done it before. We're not going to do it now. But we could go to your screen time right now. Go to my screen time. Go to this. Go to that. Think about this. Whatever your eyes. Your eye is like a lamp. And it provides light for your whole body. Why is your marriage not doing good? Because you're looking at someone that's not your wife. You've filled your body full of lustful things. If you'd have been looking at Jesus and looking at your wife, your marriage would be good. Your light's the light for your whole body, right? Your eyes are the light for the whole body. Well, I'm not, I'm not closer to God because you look at everything besides his word. How do you behold Christ in all of his glory? Through his written word. I just want to get close to Jesus. Well, read the Bible. How simple is that? How profound is that? Yet how does it, why do we always run back like a pig to the slop or the dog to the vomit? our flesh understands it we don't understand how much pull the, like the gravitational pull of the solar system our flesh has on our eyes and our ears and everything that we are pulling us towards things that will destroy us when your eye is healthy your whole body is filled. when your eye is unhealthy your whole body is filled with darkness and if the light so, and what I like about this is this He's saying some people are confused. Some people don't understand what they think is light is really darkness. Because in human reasoning, our flesh says this is light because you like it. Well, God will give me the desires of my heart. Not if it's not his will. Like whatever, you don't, you, you don't get to sin and get the desires of your heart from God. That's not how this works. But our human reasoning says, oh, this must be good. I like it. This must be good. You know, this feels good. This is, but it's saying that here, if you think 
you actually, it's not light, it's darkness. How deep really is a darkness that has a facade of light? How deep is the darkness in the church today where we say we have a church full of light and it's actually, and it's so dark we think it's light? It's so dark we think, how deep is that real darkness? You know, this is the only time God ever calls anything other God but money. There's the God of heaven and there's the God of mammon. There is no other gods. And Jesus never explains that any other way. There's two gods on earth. It's the God of possession. It's the God of I want this. Or it's the God of I want you. And there's only two of them. And you've got to figure out which one it is. Now Luke is a different passage. It's not the same teaching. But when I was cross-referencing this today, it's almost the same identical saying. It's almost like it's got a little twist at the end. No one lights a lamp and hides it or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is to be placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Nobody should have to wonder what your light is. Amen. Oh, I didn't know you went to church. Dad gum, what have you been doing? <laughs> I mean, people don't know you go to church. I didn't know you were a Christian. What in the world? You're probably not. I mean, literally, people say things like that to people who actually know Jesus. Nobody would have said to Jesus, I didn't know you loved God. Nobody would have said that to him. Think about these statements. No one has a light and hides it. Everybody that has Jesus lets the light shine. You let it out. You talk about it. You talk about the, the best thing that's ever happened to you. The reason you're not on drugs anymore is because you just willed one day that you were going to quit taking them. You got Jesus and he empowered you in such a way that you were able to come up, overcome all your hurts and hang ups and habits and all that through the power of the Holy Spirit in you. That's why. That's your testimony. Let me encourage y'all. When y'all get up and give your testimony, tell less about what you did in your past and tell more about what God's done in the present. And what he's going to do in the future. All right. Think about it. No one that has Jesus hides him. No one that has Jesus hides him. You can't hide him. You can't hide Jesus. This is a light that's seen by all who enter the house. This is the same. He just twisted a little bit. Jesus says here in verse 34. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. It's very important. Oh, it don't matter. I can watch this movie. I can do this. I can do that. I can look at, look at a little porn every now and then. It ain't never hurt nobody. This is how we were made. Actually, it hurts everybody. In fact, it's killing you. In fact, everything you put in your body or look at that's not of God is killing you. All sin leads to death. Just always remember that. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy... Your whole body is filled with light. Think about unhealthy moments in your life and think about what you've looked at and listened to. Think about that. When you're in the Word, when, when you're worshiping, when you're around people who believe the same and teach the same, walk in that way, that you're healthy. But think about unhealthy moments. Think about that. Well, I just, man, I used to love that kind of stuff. I'm just going to, a little bit, little, little, no, don't do it. Don't do it at all. But when it is unhealthy, you fill with darkness. Make sure. This is that self-examination. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. Jesus. Haven't we prophesied in your name? And done many wonderful works and. Didn't we go to church and dress right and talk right and walk right? and You know, all that Jesus said. We, we cast out demons. We healed people. Je Jesus, look at. I'm sorry. I never knew you. The light you thought you had was really darkness. 
Here's what I'm telling you. You might have a lot of money. The devil can give people money. You might have everything you've ever wanted. What if that's Satan's way of keeping you in a hole so you die and go to hell? We're judging this the wrong way. We're judging spiritual blessings with material things and physical things. And that's not the way Jesus ever did it. Ever. It was actions and attitudes, not possessions. It was what we did with what we've been given. Did we build bigger barns? Or were we okay with the barn we have and gave the other stuff to someone who needed it? What did we do? What have you done with what God's given you? Think about this. Make sure that this light that you think you have is not actually darkness. If you are filled with light with no dark corners. Now that's a statement, isn't it? How many of you have ever had a dark corner in your life? Amen. Yeah. Yeah, all of us. But here's what I'm tired of. I'm tired of everybody using all the Old Testament saints and New Testament saints saying, well, they were just sinners like the rest of us and just makes us feel good about our sin. Why don't we use them for examples of grace, how God didn't kill them and send them to hell and how he forgave them and told them to go and sin no more, okay? Right, let's, let's change the narrative here. I'm, I'm grace and mercy, but the reason you see those stories is to know that there's something better. You can do better. There's more. And God can use you in a great way. Don't key on the sinfulness. But key on the grace of God that led them to a better place than what they were at. You might have a dark corner. But don't say, well, everybody's got dark corners. We just all got dark corners. Everybody's got dark corners. Jesus doesn't want you to have any dark corners. What if I gave you, let's do percentages. Do you live for Jesus 95% of the time? Do you live for Jesus 90% of the time? 85, 80, 70, 60? There's 100 righteous. Will you spare this city? There's 90, 80, 70, 10, 5, 1. I did a spiritual inventory this year, week. What's my percentage? It's pro- here, here's the honest truth about the matter. I probably say it's higher than Jesus would. <laughs> I'd probably say, yeah, it's 95. Jesus said, but you never were real good at math. <laughs> you might want to ask your wife what the, hey, guys, why don't you look at your wife right now and ask them what your percentage is. They'll know better than you do. And they'll be honest. What's your percentage? Dark corners. Light and darkness. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. If you are filled with light, with no dark corners, then your whole life, the totality of who you are and what you do, will be radiant as though a floodlight were filling you with light. Not a two dollar dollar store, because ain't nothing for a dollar anymore, amen. It's a dollar twenty five store. You went to the dollar twenty five tree and got you a two dollar flashlight. All right? No, 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 no. Filled you with a floodlight. The floodlight. Y'all ever seen them big barges coming down the river? Them big lights? Man, they'll come down the river and just blind you. Because they are full of light. And that's what Christ desires from us. Here's what I'm struggling with. It was, it's easier for me to be full of light in Honduras than it is in, in Camden, Tennessee. That's what I'm struggling with. Amen. It's easier to live like Christ amongst the people who don't have anything to live, than to live in this place where all the expectations and living up to the Joneses and Everything we drive and everything we wear and all that we do. Because over there, it's just, it is what it is. Everybody's on the same field. And really, if I'm honest with you, this is a bigger mission field than Honduras. 
sincerely is. I'd say there's more lost people within a 15 mile radius of right here than there is of that place we go over there. Now God's called us to there too. But if we were ever going to decide to be a light anywhere, I would say that we should first start in our Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. And I should give no less to this people group than I would to that people group. I should be that barge light. Amen? (laughs) We're country. We understand that, right? I should be that light that shines in such a way that Christ is so radiant and so glorious coming out of my life that it actually blinds the darkness that I'm put in the middle of. And that Satan is destroyed and that Christ is, is exalted. The darkness is pushed back and the kingdom of God goes forward. Amen? So this is what I want us to do for the next 15 minutes. If we can play some non-distracting music because I want people praying. I don't want them singing, okay? I want them praying. I want to pray. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. That's the goal right now. That's the goal right now. As the music begins to play, I want us all to find a place at the altar, in our seats, kneeling down wherever we need to get. And I want us to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what's really inside of us. Who are we really? What are we really? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why do we go to church? Why do we do the things we do? What's the purpose of all this? Is this really light? Do I Okay, it is light. Do I have any dark corners? Absolutely. What am I going to do? I'm going to get rid of them. Amen. Repent. God's graceful. Forgiveness. Mercy. Amen. He says, you're forgiven. And you say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. As a good child. Is this light? Help me with my dark corners, Father. Let me be radiant as a floodlight. I'll begin to pray. You come on to the altar. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this moment where we can just work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. God, I thank you for what you're working out in me. And God, I pray uh, that I am what you want me to be, that I am called to the people you've called me to. God, you've not released me from this place or from this church or from these people. But God, I pray that I would have a desire and a passion for the place you've planted me. God, I pray that this room would have a desire and a passion for the place you've planted them. God, if they live here, these are their people to win for the cause of Christ. These are the people you've called us into community with to shine that flood light. God, if it's not light, Tell me it's darkness. And if there's any wicked way in me or any dark corners, help it be destroyed by repentance and the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in the way that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. We're all praying. We're all praying. It's level ground at the foot of the cross.
really the light part. Reveal to us. Are we really the light in this kingdom? Does darkness prevail because there is no light? Do we have dark corners, God? Reveal to us all things, the good and the bad. Show us our hearts. Let us not be able to deny that which lingers inside of us. Things that come out, Father, when we're put in certain situations. What comes out, light or darkness, that will help us to see. Is it the glory of the Lord that's seen? The glory of our flesh? Write upon our heart, O Lord. Minister to us through your Holy Spirit. Give us things in our mind, God, to change the picture that we might see who we really are and what you want us to see. Renovate our minds. Renew us, God. Let us not hear what we want, but let us hear what you say. Let's not be able to reason it away, Father. Our hearts are desperately wicked. This morning, could you fill us only by the flesh fighting against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh? Father, we know that we can overcome fighting from a place of victory. But the greatest battle is within us, not on the outside. Father, you have our hearts. Now you want our heads, our eyes, and our ears, our mouths, our hands, and our feet. That our whole life, God, would radiate your glory. Everything we do and say, everywhere we go, all that we are a part of, will radiate your glory, will shine your light. There'll never be a missaid word, a misspoken word, God. That we would be slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to hear. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me be quick to speak of my Lord, slow to speak of my Savior. serve no other God but you. And there is no other God but you. Jehovah, you are God and there is none like you.